Verilog module. A module is a block of Verilog code that implements a certain functionality, like a circuit that does the sum, the product, some digital signal processing, hardware encryption, arithmetic logical unit, or a test bench. Modules are very simple. They have inputs, outputs, and in-out ports. Here are two basic rules. Each module should be written in a file with the same name. So if you have a module that does the sum, you should write it in a file called sum.v. All Verilog code is encapsulated within a module, at least for this course. Module port types or connectivity rules. When modules are connected together, they pass data from one to another by using their ports. Each output port becomes a source and each input port becomes a destination. Remember, inputs and in-outs should be nets or wire type. Outputs can be nets or registers, which is wire or register type. Here is a simple module example. We have an 8-bit adder. It has two inputs and one output. The output sum is assigned with the value of A plus B. You should always start and end a module with the module and end module keywords. You have a port list of the types input, output, and in out. Please remember to group ports of the same type when you write them. Modules communicate with other modules using their ports. They can be instantiated or embedded in other modules and establish a hierarchy. The top level module instantiates all the other sub modules. We can make a simple analogy with a Russian doll, and the largest doll is the top level module. All the other smaller dolls are the sub modules. Modules can be cascaded with other modules to obtain complex functionality. Complex functionality is split into smaller stages and packed in modules. This is easier to develop, test, and maintain. Here we have a hardware module that does the advanced encryption standard. We can see how the functionality is split into several smaller modules, which are interconnected. A special type of module is the test bench. This is a very log module without ports. It instantiates the top level of the design, which is called the DUT, or the design under test. The test bench generates stimulus for input ports and monitors the results of the output ports. A test bench is similar with a laboratory environment where you test a circuit. You have to provide the supply, you need some push buttons, and with some probes you can observe how the circuit behaves. The test bench is run using an HDL simulator. Test benches are used to validate a digital design before it gets into a silicon chip and that's why they are so important.